What does it take to build a custom object recognition mobile app? Starting from raw data, we'll find out on this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. Today, we're joined by Sarah Robinson, a developer advocate on my team who also focuses on machine learning. She created an app that recognizes pictures of Taylor Swift, and she joins me today in the studio to discuss how she accomplished it. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be on AI Adventures. So you wrote a sensational Medium article that I've got open here uh, about your Swift detector, uh, which kind of showcases end-to-end -end machine learning from gathering and pre-processing the data mm -hmm. to training and serving from cloud machine learning engine. And there's even Firebase and an iPhone app in the mix. Lots of different tools. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's super amazing. What inspired this project? So I had seen a couple of other blog posts mm -hmm. on the TensorFlow Object Detection API, and I'd been wanting to try it out. These blog posts did things like uh, detecting pets, whether there was a cat or a dog in an image. I saw another one about detecting raccoons. Oh, wow. Um, so then I thought I wanted to try it on my own with some of uh, some training data that I found. Uh -huh. And the easiest thing I thought of was to just look at my Google Photos and find all the pictures of myself Right. Uh, to train a model to recognize me. I had lots of selfies, so I had enough training data. Yeah, and the, that search function on Google Photos. Super helpful. It's pretty great. Yeah. Um, so I trained that model locally. It works mm -hmm. pretty well. Uh, but I wanted to build an end-to-end -end demo. And I know a little bit of Swift, so I thought it'd be cool if I built an iOS client to make a prediction request against my model, um, which made me think, why don't I build a model to detect Taylor Swift? Because why not? Swift with Swift. Perfect. So it looks like here you're using the TensorFlow Object Detection API to uh, find Taylor Swift in these pictures. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what that is and how you use it, what was it like to use it? Yeah, sure. So the Object Detection API is some utilities that make it easier to recognize objects in an image. So rather than just classifying an image as this image has a cat in it, mm -hmm. it'll return bounding boxes of where that object is in the image. Um, and to do that, it's using a technique called transfer learning. Okay. Um, which utilizes a model that's already been trained on a similar classification task using millions and millions of images. Right. Um, and then what what I do as a developer using the object detection API is um, I take the checkpoints of um, the second to last layer of that model that's been trained on millions of images, and then I update it with my own data so that I don't need to start from scratch um, So I didn't have time to label millions of images of Taylor Swift. Though I'm sure you wouldn't have minded, right? I wouldn't have minded. Um, <laughs> Going through all those pictures, yeah. Um, so I just needed to use a smaller set of training data mm -hmm. um, to update the final layer of that oh, model. It's fantastic that you can kind of stand on the shoulder of giants, all the, all the work and all the training that's already been done on these models. That's one of the great things about transfer learning. Yeah. So was the training kind of quicker as a result mm -hmm. because you didn't have to go through as many images? Mm -hmm, much faster. So instead of taking maybe days, it took just a couple hours. Fantastic. Awesome. And then so actually uh, doing the work then, right, I guess you would have had to um, somehow get the images mm -hmm. and do any pre-processing required to have the TensorFlow Object Detection API kind of consume those images, mm -hmm. whatever formatting you needed to do, and then uh, actually run the training. Mm -hmm. So um, the Object Detection API requires your images be in what's called a TF record format. TF record, okay. Mm -hmm. And to get them in the, that format, um, I converted my images to what's called the Pascal VOC format, which is just one format you can choose from. It stands for mm -hmm. Visual Object Classification. Okay. Um, and what that is, is that's an XML file. Um, so I take all my images and I generate this XML file, which gives me details on the bounding box of uh, okay. where so, the object is. So that's what's in the XML file. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of coordinates here of, of the, mm -hmm. the boxes themselves. So okay. it has the X, Y coordinates of right. where my object is in the image, and then it just has the label associated with that uh, bounding box. In this case, I just have one label, Taylor Swift. Only need one. Only need one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So then, let's see, we we have our data, it's labeled, and I guess now there's only one thing to do, hit the training. Yeah, so training is next. So with all these kind of steps, can you just outline kind of how they all uh, connect together? Mm -hmm. So I drew the bounding boxes around my images, uh -huh. um, got them into the Pascal format. right? And then once they're in that format, I wrote a script to convert them to a TF record, which I can then use to feed into my model. Gotcha. Okay. So all of these kind of steps, now they're all connected. Mm -hmm. We've gone from the raw image to a, well, not just a label image, but specifically TF records so mm -hmm. that's even formatted correctly. So now we're ready for our training, mm -hmm. I guess, right? And so... 
In this case, we're going to do our training on ML engine, it looks like, based on your, your blog post here. Mm -hmm. Yep. How, how was that process and kind of what, what did you have to do to make that work? So it was similar to the process I used for running the training locally. Mm -hmm. um, the main difference being I needed to put all of my data in Google Cloud Storage right. and tell ML Engine uh, where to find it. So the first thing I needed to get in Google Cloud Storage was the uh, the model checkpoints from the pre-trained model I was using. I used a model called MobileNets, which is mm -hmm. optimized for mobile, obviously. Um, so I put those checkpoints in my cloud storage bucket. Mm -hmm. I also needed my um, training and test TF record files, which I talked right. about before, how I generated yep. those. Um, and then I have a config file, uh, which tells the object detection API where my training and test data is located. And it supports um, ML Engine and Google Cloud Storage. Great, great. And so that whole thing kind of... Um, comes together and I guess just takes care of all the training for you then? Mm -hmm. Awesome. And yep. how, long, how long did that training kind of take? Everyone wants to know, you know, if the training takes a long time or a little time and how long you had to wait for that. I think it took about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay. That's not too, that's not not too, too, too long. Yeah. yeah. Given what you're getting out of it, that's, exactly. that's quite nice. So once training's done, you what do you have kind of as your result? What do you have in your hands? So you have a model checkpoint, which okay. is just a binary file, um, similar to the pre-trained model checkpoint that I used um, to start training. This is now gonna be the final model checkpoint, which has been updated uh, with all of my training data. Gotcha, okay. So that, that's very nice. And mm -hmm. then you, I guess, would now kind of flip it over the wall to the serving side. So for to serve it, I can use um, a gcloud command with ML Engine to deploy my model. I just need to point it at where those checkpoint files are mm -hmm. of my final train model. Okay. Um, and then in just a couple of minutes, I have my model available for serving and I can use that to generate predictions against the model. Fantastic. And so I guess this kind of brings us to the next uh, next phase of mm -hmm. this project where we've gone from our data, we've pre-processed it, we've done the training, mm -hmm. and we have um, the, this kind of API that can serve up predictions at scale. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so now we're ready to call that endpoint. And what, what did you end up uh, kind of architecting here? It looks like you have a couple of couple of pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's using a couple of different Firebase SDKs. So um, the client is a Swift app. It's an iOS app that's written in Swift. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty thin client. So yeah. all the client is doing is it's uploading an image um, to Firebase storage. Oh, OK. So that's what that arrow is for. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Exactly. And then um, we're using the Firebase SDK for cloud functions. Mm -hmm. So a function is triggered whenever an image is uploaded to a specific storage bucket. Ah, very handy. Mm -hmm. um, so the function is written in Node.js. And that function does a bunch of different things. It downloads the image, um, and then it resizes it. It base64 encodes it, um, which will prepare it for the um, ML Engine online prediction request. OK. So I make that prediction request. Um, if the confidence that I get back is greater than 70%, that's just a threshold that I've chosen, um, I'm going to draw a box around that image. Okay, so that, and the box drawing is, it looks like it's happening here in your node uh, code. Yeah, I'm doing that using image magic, which is available in Google Cloud Functions. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah, very convenient. And so then once the box is drawn, do you, uh, how, how do you get that information back to your client then? So once the box is drawn, I write the image to Firebase Storage, and then I also write some metadata on the image to Cloud Firestore, uh, oh, which is okay. a database. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm writing the, the confidence of the detection along with the path of the image in Firebase Storage. Gotcha. So that's why you kind of have these two write operations coming from your cloud function. Exactly. Um, and the reason I'm using Firestore is in my client, I can create a listener mm -hmm. on the ID of that image path. Um, and so then I get updates whenever new data has been added to that collection in Firestore. Oh, perfect. So I don't have to keep pulling, yeah. pulling that to see if the detection is finished. So right when it's finished, my client will get an update, and then I can then download the new image with the box around it, right. along with the confidence detection score. So that's really neat that you've managed to use the kind of architecture mm -hmm. to signal in both directions, right? You upload to cloud storage, and that uh, triggers the cloud function. So you, on upload, something happens, and it happens right away. And then coming back, once the response from ML Engine is received, you're using Firestore to basically give that real-time update to hit your phone right away as well. Mm -hmm. So you kind of keep that loop tight, even though you've managed to do this while all the, all the while maintaining this kind of thin client. That's really nice, that the way you've kind of leveraged the existing technology. You didn't have to write anything to make sure everything happened nice and uh, quick, but async. Yeah, one thing that's great about Firebase is I get those real-time updates whenever new data comes in that path. Fantastic. So I guess 
zooming out a little bit, you know, you've built a mobile app that builds a custom machine learning model, you've collected your data, you've annotated it, you're training and you're serving at scale to your mobile client. Uh, what did you find to be kind of the most interesting part of all of this? I would say definitely learning to tie together all these different tools. So there's a lot of different things I use to build the app from end to end, from yeah. TensorFlow object detection um, to cloud machine learning engine, which had a couple of different components. It had training, serving, and online prediction. Mm -hmm. um, and then the client piece using um, some Swift SDKs and Firebase SDK for cloud functions. Yeah, I mean, just along the way, you're hitting Python, Node, Swift, JavaScript. Oh, JavaScript is there. Uh, uh, even a little bit of Bash with the G cloud oh, commands. Right. Yeah. Right. Outstanding. And so on the whole, what did you find to be most challenging kind of out of all of this? Um, the most challenging part was getting all of the data into Google Cloud Storage because there's mm -hmm. a lot of different pieces that needed to be there from the, the pre-trained model checkpoints, the TF records, and then that config file, which tells object detection where to find these different pieces. Right. And these are all coming kind of from different places and just getting it all arranged. Yeah, I could see how that could be challenging. And I guess, was, it, was there some fun parts as well, hopefully, along the way? It was. It was pretty fun to build. Um, one thing that was kind of funny was as I was, I, I labeled all the images myself. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a day Hard where work. I, I know it's it a tough <laughs> job. Um, so there was a day where I had pictures of Taylor Swift on my computer. People walked by, were probably wondering what I was doing. Yeah, just perusing <laughs> photos all day. Right? Exactly, generating nice. those bounding boxes. Um, and the most fun thing was definitely the final result of seeing on the iOS app um, the prediction with the bounding box come back in real time. Definitely, yeah, that's a long journey. Mm -hmm. it, it was. Awesome. And as I understand, you've actually open sourced your code on GitHub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all available on my personal GitHub repo, and there's instructions in the README if you want to build the same model yourself. Awesome. So it's, that's so great that our audience can go out and build their own model. Um, and I want to thank you so much. You know, really appreciate you coming in today and, and chatting in the studio. Thanks for having me. Great yeah, to be here. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. Today, we saw how to go from raw data to training, to a mobile client. You can use Sarah's GitHub repo to not only recreate this, but extend it with your own data, a different model, or a different client app. For more details, we've included links to all the resources we discussed in the description, so check it out. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please like it and subscribe to get more episodes right when they come out. So the object detection API um, is more of a series of, sorry, I'm going to redo that. What does it take to build a custom image recognition? No. Custom object recognition. What does it take to build a custom rec <laughs> a custom, custom object, object recognition, recognition mobile app? Don't know what to do next. <laughs>